Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to a Premier League presentation bringing you guys a game from the Season 5 Agadim's Cup. This is going to be the second game of this best of three series to decide the grand finals. Who's going to be taking home that cup? Who is going to be the first place winner? So uh, we do see Fnatic already taking one game off of Alliance. Really, really smoothly Ten done. Seconds. Seeing Enigma more actively, seeing uh, the Viper on the mid lane. Really, really effective as a whole, and yeah, it's just with picking up such an aggressively greedy lineup of trying to pick up carries, you need to get the farm early on them, and unfortunately that just didn't work out for them. The way they laned it, uh, it just, they couldn't really get their feet underneath them, and as a result, yeah, Fnatic pushing for the win around 20 some odd minutes into the game, so very, very efficient in time as well as strategy, and they take one game off Alliance. We'll see if they can turn it into a 2-0 shutout, or if Alliance is going to make that one a 1-1 one -one equalizer. Either way, right now, seeing the draft come into play, we do see Fnatic starting off with their first pick, first band, taking out the Lone Druid so that Alliance do not have Ten that option. Uh, my, I, myself, and Blaze. Here's Triumph of Man. What's going on? Five yeah, well, seconds. guys, if you bet rares on Alliance, I bet you're clenching your buttholes right now because, my God, a Fnatic back in fine form. They have been struggling recently, and I mean partially because the team's been split up, traveling and stuff like that, but they've been in a pretty heavy slump. People have been freaking out and saying, why are you guys in the TI3 and stuff like that and getting really mad over it? But it's a good day to be a Fnatic fanboy because, my God, they are completely dominating tonight. And there we go, some solar bands from Fnatic. Get rid of the bear dog, get rid of Aki's chin. And they're going to open up with a gyrocopter for Era once again. So, some solid stuff from them, but we'll see what they roll into next. Alliance, I get the feeling we're going to see the live steal. Yeah, there we go. Loader on live steal. So, you know what? Tried and true. And there we go, Nature's Profit for Admiral Bulldog instead. Yep. So Predictable stuff. Pick that up and uh, very Midas oriented play with the, pro the Bulldog Profit. It's going to mean that they have a great potential in the mid game. And along with that, uh, I really love how aggressive he gets prior to that Midas. He still goes in, he still teleports, and gets some good right clicks off, no matter what. And in that situation, they can also transition into a very effective push. Now, the most common strategy I've seen from Alliance is to pick up a Basilius on a hero that Aero play, or sorry, Loda plays, and then push in with the two supports and the Prophet all at once. But uh, Lestiller doesn't really run the Bassy, so maybe they'll switch that up either to the Prophet or to one of the other supports. Um, obviously, Chen not being an option does should limit that a little bit, but the mindset is going to be early towers and early ganks, and that's going to be what the Prophet's all about, whether he jungles or off lanes, depending on how safe he feels, that the Bane is one of those heroes that makes it much more difficult to actually feel comfortable in that kind of a situation on the off lane. Yeah, speaking on uh, Bulldog's Nature's Prophet, you know you know that guy. You played in a pub, and there's that Nature's Prophet who sits in the forest for 50 minutes straight rising. That is not Bulldog. Bulldog has, I think I checked his stats, he's just shy of a 70% team fight participation rate. So he, he pretty much, if a team fight is going down the map or a gang's going down the map, he's there. He is there and he wants a kill. He is going to help out every, every single damn time that he can. So he always participates as much as possible, and pretty much means it's very difficult. It's going to be very difficult for Fnatic to gank because he'll be there jumping, turning the fight around 2v3, 3v4, and just trying to get that numbers advantage. But Fnatic now, with their second series of bands, not get the puck, the Storm Spirit, they are worried about S4 mobility heroes being used in conjunction with Lifestealer. I think it's it's the solid band. That said, if worse, if push comes to shove, they can always they can always just go clockwork. Or pick up the life, or just use life steal on Nature's Profit. Nature's Profit can, of course, act as that mobility taxi service. Fnatic, I think, may see them grab up the clockwork as well, just to try and keep it out of Alliance's hands, if possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's my gut feeling. That said, Alliance have the first pick exactly. here. Exactly. It think, totally so. depends on if Alliance decides to yeah. draft their third or their fourth for S4. Generally speaking, they've been running their fourth pick, but. We'll have to see. One big thing is the Treant was picked up very early in the previous drafts, and now we're not actually seeing that guy mentioned at all. So, I mean, is he a, would you consider him a situational pick, or always good to work around? You just pick him up so that you can build your team based on that. Uh, sorry, go again? The Treant, would you say he's situational, or do you think he's actually kind of a good bread-and-butter foundational hero? <sighs> I'm honestly not too sure on trade. The fact that his ult doesn't do damage anymore really, really bothers me. He like he pretty much brings bugger all damage to the to the setup. That said, he he's good CC, but you really need to have the follow up damage. It's kind of like it's kind of like sort of playing a puck with no damage. Like you get the good lockdown in there, but then you've got to have someone to sweep in and follow up. So if you've got like a life stealer, he doesn't do like he hits pretty hard, but it's not that much. So. You really need some big burst damage. With Keeper Light, I think it's doable. I think he really needs to have a lot of burst damage backing him up to be useful. And in all honesty, I, as of as of right now, personal opinion, I think the standard support stuff like the Lena, even the CM, I favor them over the the nature's um, the Keeper of the Forest. To be dead honest. Mm -hmm. 
So, with this, I'm actually really, really confident Alliance's draft. That Rubik was obviously exactly what they wanted to go for. They see the Bane, they're like, hey, Fiend's stealing Fiend's group would be nice. Stealing Call Down would be nice. Why don't we just throw an Enigma in there? So now, Enigma has a black hole in the field. Perfect opportunity for EGM to t take this one up for himself. And uh, it was kind of a, a bait and switch. They, they pick it up. They will. Ma that does mean they have to leave S4 Zero to 5th pick, and that means Fnatic gets another ban against it. But, all in all... Rubik here is just impeccable. He has so much potential to get a really, really good steal off and from a number of different heroes and change how the game plays itself out. Now, that being said, all the other heroes are kind of trash against Enigma. The Prophet doesn't lock him down until after he gets a Scythe or an Orchid, and the Keeper Light, Blinding Light, won't do anything either. So they're going to be great in lanes. They're going to destroy the laning phase, in my opinion. But when it comes down to the team fights, once again, Fnatic have it in their hands unless EGM becomes that all-star player that really just steps up to bat uh, for those steals, but we'll see. Right now, banning out Hani's Viper, banning out S4's potential Magnus, which, although it's not the most threatening of things these days, it's still something that he could have been looking into, and now they've taken out the Clockwork, they've banned out the Puck and the Storm Spirit, and they have also now just now taken off the Magnetar. Yeah, S4 doesn't have nearly as many options as he would prefer. Yeah, I think we'll see what he goes for in the end. But um, speaking of the Enigma and Black Holes and Rubik stealing, I'll actually be fairly shocked if Rubik gets a lot of good Black Hole steals just because, let's be honest, how many Black Holes did we see last game? We saw yeah. 22 minutes in one Black Hole. So <laughs> I expect he'll get a few Fiends grips, though. Bang was really active last game with those ganking a lot. So Rubik, good, pot good potential to steal those a lot. But in all honesty, I honestly feel like they've been like running Enigma. Like, as we've seen several games so far, Enigma's been in there, not for the black holes. We've seen mm -hmm. so few of them. It's more just get the Eidolons in there and the guarantee, the almost guaranteed mech. It's just the really easy, fast, safe bomb on the mech. So I think they've been picking mostly for that. Mm -hmm. So, and I mean, at the last second, obviously, if he throws in the black hole, the end always usable. But that said, if Rubik gets a clutch black hole, I mean, that can completely swing anything around. So we'll see. Yeah. And it looks like right now, Alliance, they are not going to be getting in those super mobile heroes unless we're going to see something. I mean, well, I'm Queen just looking at there. this. Yeah, Queen of Pain. Actually, yeah, I suppose Queen of Pain's always there. Or even, even I, I mean, come on, Templar Assassin's not even that bad. We could even see her come back, especially since some of the more annoying things against her was the fact that the bottle crowing mm -hmm. really cut down her ability to do a lot of harass and damage in there. So now that that's less of an issue, I mean, she's always a possibility as well, I feel. Yeah, the frustrating part about that is they have the Gyrocopter. They can sw swap over to the mid lane and run Gyrocopter versus TA, and that will not be a match she wants to take. They take the Queen of Pain. That's going to be pretty good for them if it's Queen of Pain for the Clockwork, and uh, it should provide them some pretty good room control as well. So I think it's a really, really good foundational lineup. Uh, you made actually a pretty good point how Enigma has been... Oh. Yeah, this oh. Be... That's actually... That's not what they want at all. Okay, yeah. That is that is actually pretty pretty dick move here. Hani going to be running the OD on the mid lane versus S4's Queen of Pain, and every single time he gets the chance, he's going to be using that prison to steal up damage from the Queen of Pain, add it to his own, and just completely dominate in CS. And on top of that, Rubik can't really take much advantage out of Sandy's Eclipse. So, yeah, it's a really, really good pick here. And it's going to force Alliance to put a lot more pressure than they'd prefer to on that mid lane. We're going to have to see a double smoke gank from EGM Ake and a TP from Nature Prophet if they actually want to bring down Hani on the mid. So it's going to be a tough one, but it's still something they can deal with. It's just very, very difficult to accomplish that. Um... Now, one thing you were mentioning before, the fact that Enigma, Ten mostly he's there for the mechanism and the push with the Eidolons. Actually, I think it would be really, really cool to see EGM seconds. get a good Eidolon yeah. steal, to steal the demonic conversion, combine that yeah. with the Nature's Call. And right now, they don't have any good counter push versus creep. So, the Rocket Flare is pretty much what they've got. Flat Cannon as well, but of course, Gyrocopter is mostly going to be focusing on farming Cannon rather than uh, defending towers. So, in this position here, I actually think that there's still a lot of tricks up their sleeve, but... Really, first and foremost, it comes down to the lanes. I was extremely confident in Alliance's lanes up until that OD got picked up, and now things get uh, a little bit more complex from there. I, I think that's uh, that's pretty much indicative of the whole last first pick, last pick deal. Mm -hmm. You get the first pick, and you get the last counter pick. My god, is that fairly brutal there. And are we going to see OD cause? I mean, obviously, he's going to be more gankable than if you had a Trant there. But a five-man, this is very aggressive from Alliance. A five-man sweep, and it's an odd sweep, too. Don't, generally speaking, will you take that route in? They're going to sweep up. I, are they actually going to chill a few? I mean, they might even chill a couple of supports here and try and get OD off the bat. Interesting. So they could stay if, in this position for a while, and S4 could just block out the mid lane perfectly fine. 
Yeah, it really depends what they're going to do. I mean, if they collapse, I mean, getting a straight up kill on OD is going to be really, that's going to be huge for them if they can manage that. But it looks like they're just going in here to get the blocks. And yeah, it looks like they were just going in here to get the blocks. And they're just going to try and slow down Enigma again. That said, we saw last time they tried to slow down Enigma, he just said, screw it, went into the enemy jungle, which worked out just fine. So, yeah, might not work out as much as they like. And it looks like, wait a minute, no, OD is going mid. It's Trixie who's going to be taking the safe lane solo. And it's an offensive tri lane being used by Fnatic now. Well, sort of no, an offensive drill lane plus jungler. Okay, so S4 solo bottom, gonna be Queen of Pain versus that of No-Tail, Era, and Fly. Though um, two of them are well hidden, gonna see him coming on in. Look for that opportunity to go for at least some big right. Oh my gosh, that barrage and the Nightmare, they're gonna get another barrage off right here. Three seconds, two, he's gonna go for the blink, but he, oh man, that was close. He only had one direction that he could blink successfully. And uh, fortunately, he picked that one, but now as for in a bit of a rough patch, he's gonna have to tango through back underneath his own tower. That's exactly what he's gonna accomplish. Now has his blink back up and available, and uh, Era and No-Tail gonna have to fall back from here. Um, surprisingly, the tower not even involved in that at all, just barely outranging the tower, and so not too much happened there. We do see Prison coming out from Hani onto EGM. A little bit annoying there, but we're actually seeing f uh, Fly. As we saw the two block, or just the one creep block, coming out for the Dire Jungle. That means Fly is going to make his impact on here, but a Seder of Shockwave, as well as that Illuminate and Telekinesis, it might be enough to finish it off right here. Right click's coming on out. Yes, it is. First Blood. EGM, picking that up for himself. Boot the Speed or Flying Courier already up at their disposal. And now, Queen of Pain solo one versus two, and Fly has to go and fall back to his own jungle. So, in this position, if our alliance is really just really secured their early game. I mean, they needed that badly. They really need the Queen of Pain to get ahead more than they need Loda to get that early farm just because they, they I mean, they're really, they're banking on her so badly. Bulldog is taking the mid to try and get him away from Hanny, and they rotate those supports down there already to try and keep him away from this Obsidian Destroyer. Meanwhile, though, Loda's probably, he's going to struggle a little bit. In fact, they're rotating again. Trixie's going to the suicide lane now to mm -hmm. take on the Queen of Pain, and they're putting Air up here, and he's probably going to be able to handle the... Um, he's probably going to be a handle Loder a lot better. Loder's not going to have that much damage. If he tries to rage and chase Era backwards, Era can just attack, like, sort of trade hits with him, back up a little bit, and then just rocket barrage him as soon as rage is down. So he's always going to have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. so, so it looks like the supports, though. Alliance supports rotating yet again. They want to help Loder out now. Yeah. So going to try to go for kind of what would have been expected just looking at the draft, and that is going to be an aggressive tri lane uh, coming out. EGM, Loder coming out with Ake here, and going to be able to, yeah, really, really make an impact on this lane, specifically trying to shut down Era. But meanwhile, we are seeing the sentries uh, attempted to try to get the stack and pull off. Unfortunately, I don't think it's actually working. I haven't seen this ward placement before, but it seems to be preventing them from stacking it up. So with that, they're going for a single pull, and that's just going to end up pushing out the wave at best. And uh, yeah, yeah, unfortunately, that means they're losing a lot of control Era. Got a CS of six, and that's not going to be increasing much beyond what he claims from this tower here. Speaking of, Loda, actually right underneath the tower, gonna take half his HP and barrage damage. Has to watch himself very carefully as Arrow's already at level 3. I mean, here's the thing, Fnatic, like, last game, obviously, they had a sort of a ticking clock. They needed to push fairly early on. Obviously, Viper wasn't going to be that useful late game. So they had a bit of a ticking clock. They really had to force the issue. This game, though, Fnatic can sort of afford to hang back because, it's like, Obsidian destroy like, OD, he just, there's very few heroes who can hit as hard as him in the late game. So as long as he gets there, like, he's going to be so difficult for them to stop. And this does worry me a little bit for Alliance, but we'll see how they handle it. Whereas, Lyra still is good and all, but he's got the issues, of course, the melee heroes sort of really vulnerable to getting kited. He's up against multiple superior magic disables. He's got the hook, he's got the fiend's grip, he's got the black hole. Dodge one, dodge two, probably third one's going to get you there. So as long as they make sure Hanny gets the farm, I think Alliance, are, uh, rather, Fnatic are going to be in a strong position for the late game. We'll see. Right now, Fly just farming up on the jungle, but in a very, very exposed position. They could easily bring down a couple of Vitalons and put some Raskin right on top of them. That's, that's exactly what they do. So they do get some nice cash out of that, 24 to 25 from each of them. And yeah, that's really, really unfortunate to just hand that gold away to the supports that are going to be able to ward against you. And once they get wards up in the jungle, gank you hardcore um, with things like the Nakes Bombs coming out from Lifestealer Furion and their co combination there. Meanwhile, down on the bottom lane, we do see S4 bottling up, using rank 2 Shadow Strike to harass Trixie back. That's why he is so low on level, so many denies coming out. 16 denies from the Queen of Pain, and just forcing him back repeatedly. Trixie's going to have a rough time with this. Though the Cogs will keep him alive in general, he is going to be on low HP if he tries to force out against the creep wave. We do see Furion going to be picking up the haste rune here. Admiral Bulldog going to select that for himself real quick. 
doesn't really have much else to do because as far as spells go, he's sitting at 45 out of 330 mana, now dropping down to 260. Hani just stacking up that int and uh, going for double null tally on top of that. So his last hit being potential is out of this world. But surprisingly, Bulldog isn't doing that bad right now. Sitting at 17 to 6 versus 22 and 10, it could be a lot worse. Uh, I think he's been using Nature's Call a little bit to help him out. They're just using the creep damage just to assist himself there. The bigger issue, I think, here, if uh, anything is going to keep the lines in this game, is the fact their rotations with the supports have been absolutely fantastic. Aaron out, copping a fair bit of damage. They're going to pop out. The Rocket Barrage likely to fall down. He's just going to try and trade kills with EGM before he goes. Have not going to be successful, and they're going to pick off the kill there. No tell, unfortunately, not really able to help. 3v2, not really fair odds there. And Fly, too slow to get there. Has got the level to Malathus, but in the end, not going to be able to help out all that much. An error. What's he sitting on farm-wise? 11 for 5. Error's not doing too well at all. In fact, this offensive try now is really shutting down his ability to farm. So we're probably going to see him just sort of fall into that sort of utility support role. Not really get used for his right-click hard carry as much. That's going to fall to OD. Yeah. So, in this position here, EGM is looking for levels. He's getting some kills here. We're actually going to see Era lifted on up. They're falling back from this position. Don't want to take too much here. As Flat Cannon can contribute a substantial amount. And Clockwork has also gone for a rotation. Trixie, only level 4 still. Forced back by Queen of Pain. Decides to TP to the top lane rather than contest those 4. That means that is going to be a very, very dangerous Queen of Pain. She's going to be able to jump around, pick up an Orchid, pick up a BKB, pick up a Sheepstick. Whatever she wants, it's going to be at her disposal very, very quickly. So that's going to be a really, really big deal because obviously there's nobody else getting that much farm other than that of the Outworld Devourer, who you can expect that, to, you actually need that to be, to make the pick relevant. Yeah, I mean, if anything is going to give him pause for that, it's the fact that Queen of Bay, she gets an early disable on him, she can so easily, if she's out of control, she can target by Hanny so easily, he's got the ability to do it, and that is definitely going to be worrisome. And they don't have something like the Shadow Demon either for the disruption saves, that's also going to be a big deal. Potential no loaders backing up, never mind, no clash down there, Fly has got his black hole, trying to skulk in there for a potential gank and i mean right now lines have to play quite cautiously it's six minutes into the wards are down just expiring now and they're always gonna be worried about the gank. and then we see the die side replacing this so they can see what's going on and they're getting ready flies thinking about getting in here and they could indeed try and jump in here although oh. they to worry about egm's lift turned around just a little bit too far now they can go on top of loda here they already popped off the enfeeble now going in for some stuns the nightmare is what's going to connect on rubik and they're going to try to go underneath this big lumet coming through and they're actually going to fall back no unfortunately fly is going to get killed right here the right click's come across s4 coming on in only has rank one blink but still might be able to bring down no tail this is a rank two shadow strike but can't find out in the jungle as he juked on towards the north towards his tower of safety so in the end they just pick off a simple enigma but that delays that mechanism and uh, put some points on the board for alliance I'm really surprised Enigma cancelled the black hole there. The fact, like, he cancelled the mid animation. I'm very surprised either. He should have gone for that black hole because, I mean, obviously he's a little bit worried about Rubik, but A, Rubik's not level 6 and so no potential to steal, and B, he was nightmare, so he was no way for him to interrupt the channel. I mean, that could have been exactly what they needed to shut oh, to bring down the life stealer, but I'm just not sure decided about the against it. Follow -up. Like, Jarcopter only has ranked 1 flat cannon because he's been putting it into Barrage and apparently 1 in stats as well. I mean, Lotus already would. I think they. I really feel like they could have done it, especially since obviously you've got the brain sap as well. Oh, I suppose it's in the level. Actually, no, it's only a level one brain sap, so maybe not. I guess that's. I guess that's ultimately why. But in the end, didn't really get a shot at doing it. Ended up dying anyway. Mm -hmm. So we're pain now. Looking for. It. Sorry, you go there. No, you go ahead. I was just saying, Queen of Pain's going for the early treads there. We'll see what she goes for. I. I mean, either way, Hex or Orc, both of them work really well. And it will help shut down the OD. They just really need those disables though to help bring him down because without it, they're going to have a lot of issues if they just let him control or just run rampant in these fights. So if they get the Hex down, I think honestly, the Hex is probably going to be the best just because it'll slow him down as well. Whereas the Orchid, it's quite easy for him just to sort of four staff or get four staffed out, that sort of business. Mm -hmm. And you sort of slip away during that. Or even just um, even just use the drums to help him run, flee, that sort of stuff. Jarakov though has gone for the Tranquil Boots. So he's just going... I, Probably see drums and just some easy items there on Era just to help him get back up to speed. Yeah, Loda trying to go in with phase boost, but it should be fly to connect with the Malifest, but is afraid of the rotation. We actually see Prophet coming on in with the trees, EGM coming out, scouting out some Eidolons, so they know exactly what's coming up right now. It's a two versus three with Prophet able to jump in at just about any time, but losing mana pretty rapidly. He might not be able to ulti. Yeah, ulti and teleport are not something you can use together, so 
uh, at this position. Honestly, not that much threat if Fly did try to go on top of them, but either way, it's better safe than sorry. Right now, like I said, they don't have damage, and they have to kind of be cautious until that changes, really. Uh, in this position here, we're you're talking about items for S4, and uh, offensive pickups like the Scythe and the Orchid sound really good, uh, but one thing that I really think that she'll need, at least sometime, maybe the second or third item, actually, nice TP from Hani, knowing that they can't actually interrupt that in any way, but um, yeah, one thing that I really think that could benefit the Queen of Pain is going for not an early but a relatively well-timed Black King bar, avoiding out the damage from the Arcane Orb, avoiding just the basic stuns for, and damage from cooldown and other different things. It really there's a lot of magic coming on out, and it won't avoid everything, but it'll avoid enough that I think it'll make her willing to go more aggressively. Now we do see EG. I'm going to get dropped down to cooldown, trying to deny himself to the Hell Bear, but not going to get that opportunity. But yeah, I just feel like if Queen of Pain doesn't have a BKB and jumps into a call down and all this other stuff, it's very likely that S4 is just going to be running in, signing his own death warrant, and committing suicide, just trying to get a good ultimate off. And that could be, obviously, the opposite of their intentions. I mean, it depends. I mean, it depends. If, as long as he can deliver Nakes, I don't think that's too much of an issue. If he can get Nakes in there, they're going to be freaking out trying to deal with him. And the main thing is just to disable OD to make sure he doesn't get his big spells down so they can target for him quickly. I do agree that he'll need one eventually, but I think he can afford to go. So they're going to actually pick up Henderson. Great blocking there from freaking Bulldog yeah. with the single. The singular tree puppet just blocking him so badly. Oh, that there, yeah, definitely responsible for the kill. Mm -hmm. But uh, I agree he's going to need it eventually, but I think he can afford to go for the um, CC item first, to be honest. Sure. I think we can see that. Um, but yeah, yeah, nice little... No, those freaking Dendrocrons moving around and really, really screwing over Hani there. They got two good pickoffs. They... they Picked off the clockwork first and then the outworld after the fact. And that was just good position, good movement, and in general, they had everybody they needed to accomplish that objective and pulled the one guy that was in danger out. So, in that position, they take a tier one, they defend their top lane here with, the, of course, now they have the counter push potential of Illuminate. And yeah, as a whole, just having a kill advantage is exactly what Alliance needs to make sure that they're going to be able to win the mid game. Because if the Fnatic was actually picking up a couple kills here and there with the Sanity's Eclipse and so on and so forth, it would actually spell disaster for Alliance. But now they have heroes that do amazing things with items. Blink Dagger on Rubik, uh, Prophet, <laughs> literally anything will work for him. And then Loda and S4 are going to be able to pick up some major items as well. And when they get their first core item, I think that they're going to be in a much safer position trying to engage in a 5v5, even though they're up against an Enigma. I honestly think it was a mistake from Fnatic not to TP to A, save the town, yeah. B, protect uh, Hanny. I really don't know why they didn't, because like here right now, this has made it so much harder for Hanny to safely farm this lane. But not just because he doesn't have a town to hide behind, but because it takes so much longer for reinforcements to TP in and then rush down here to try and save him. So I feel like they definitely should have tried to save that tower at all costs. And, but, you know, props to Alliance. They knew that's the tower they really needed to kill. So it's really going to cut down their farming options. Because he can't really go up to the top lane and start farming out. Because he's got to keep that. Like, they need error to be farming as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hard to split it among the different ones there. The answer, generally speaking, is going to be these ancient stacks. Um, but they haven't really started on that just yet. Uh, honestly, Trixie hasn't stacked it a single time. So in this position, if they lose their bottom tier 1, then they're just going to be very, very limited on options as far as actually finding good, reliable farm locations. S4, ultimate just now coming off cooldown, is invisible, and there's only a sentry ward up on the bane, which he probably won't drop until he actually has a reason to. Anyways, coming on in, ultimate coming on through, scream across, beautiful Wrath of Nature, and the Infest almost picking off Era. Can they clean him up too? They should, but there's that TP coming across, and S4 not able to get the blink off cooldown. So, oh my goodness, that was still a really good combo, but unfortunately they didn't get what they were looking for. They ju jumped in, they got a Sonic Wave Scream, Infest, and Wrath of Nature, but the Infest didn't hit Gyrocopter. It hit just the Enigma, and Era was able to get out just by the skin of his teeth. It was a great plan, uh, half the results they were looking for still very, very nice to see. I just want to bring up something on CS. At about the 10 minute mark, we had Hanny over the 50 CS mark. And Bulldog, despite in about the first five minutes, he was keeping pace with him. As the game grew on, like as the time wore on, he's really gotten ahead of him. He's up to 76 now. But at the 10 minute mark, Bulldog was struggling at 25. Hanny had just literally doubled his CS there. So Hanny now definitely farming quite strongly. Hasn't picked up any of those sort of early. Often we see sort of like the early mech. On the, on the Outward Devourer, or even just going for the early 4 stuff as well, just to give him some survivability, but he hasn't really had a chance to pick that up just yet. Picks up a TP as well. Probably won't see the mech on him this game, because Enigma already well on his way to the mech, but he should have that within the next 5 minutes. It's a little bit delayed, obviously struggled a little bit during the early game, got picked off a couple of times, which is a bit of a pain in the ass, so they won't have it as quick as they like. But then again, this game, they don't need it that quickly. 
because they're not under the clock here that as badly as last game. And in all honesty, the longer this game comes on, they're probably better off. Now, Queen of Pain has picked a row over the match. I get the feeling we'll see an Oblivion staff on her. She'll probably get over X, but a gank up on top. S4 gets pinned down by the Fiend's Grip. Will she be finished off? Yes, she will call down in as well. And it looks like Arrow will get away. Just gets out of line of sight before Wrath of Nature comes wow, in. So Lucky close. for him there, and he will TP out. Yeah, and now we've got the Astral Imprisonment as well. It looks like Bulldog's going to regret this. He goes in the Black Hole to cancel. Sandy's Eclipse as well, and then an easy kill there. Three for none. Nicely done. Can they get the towers? Well, yes, they will. Fantastic turnaround there for Fnatic. Yeah, that was just perfect coordination. Fnatic at their finest right there. That was amazing. The timing of No Tails Ultimate. When Queen of Pain jumps in, drops everything on Era. he's two right clicks away from death, and suddenly the Fiend's Grip comes on through. He turns it around immediately with the call down. Now do you see Trixie getting picked off here, so they do get a return kill, as well as the tier 1 tower kill. But it does not in any way make up for what happened up on that top lane. Picking off the Prophet, uh, they, they allowed Era to get out of the Wrath of Nature range, they prisoned the Prophet so that he couldn't get the right clicks in, and uh, they just completely obliterated the Queen of Pain and the Keeper of Light very, very quickly, and Era just getting away. Very, very clutch save from all of them there, and we're going to see more of that because they have the mechanism available, they have the prison up at four seconds, they're going to be able to really sock it to Alliance, and if more coordination comes out, it's going to be difficult for them to hit their mark. Yeah, I mean, that was huge. That fight put that, like, it basically boosted that mech timing by at least two, three minutes. So it's a pretty big deal from there. Now that he's got that up and running, it's going to be so much harder to take them if they try and push and get these early team fights. And of course, as long as he's around OD, OD now becomes that much more difficult. He'll give them some much needed armor as well as a huge health boost as well. It looks like, though, that said, Alliance now want that tier 1 top tower. The question is whether or not we'll see Fnatic rally to try and defend it, or if they're just going to try and trade for the tier 1 mid. I feel like they should try and defend, but they're not going to get up there quickly enough. In fact, they're just going to pop the glyph to slow things down while they try and trade for mid. The mid's full health, though, pretty much, so I don't think it's going to happen. They're yeah. going to have the ports coming here to defend before they can do anything. The problem was that double ulti um, between Black Hole and Sandy's Eclipse, both dropping down on top of the Nature Prophet. They only needed one of the two. And uh, they kind of, uh, as good of a coordination there as there was to save Era, the follow up they did waste one big cooldown at least. And with that, they just can't hold the line. That's their two big team fight abilities, other than call down, which of course is very brief. So they want all five. They want to be able to rumble and make sure they get clean kills. And if that costs them a tower, that's so be it. Unfortunate for them, but uh, they'll be able to bounce back with their next engage. This is my worrying part. Like this is once they start losing these towers, they're losing a lot of farming ground. And this is, I think, where lights have a huge potential to strangle them out because they've got that mobility, they've got the ganking power, and they can just bring the nakes bombs in. Queen of Pain, Nature's Prophet, they can just bring those nakes bombs, and suddenly the jungle becomes really difficult to farm. You see these offensive wards as well from Alliance, really smart, making sure they can see what's going on. And now Enigma, very vulnerable. I mean, we can load up a nakes bomb over here and just jump in and destroy him. So he's really got to watch for that. Hmm. Now Fiend's Grip actually wasted down on bottom. Of the big thing there was the timing of uh, Loda casting out his Rage. By casting Rage, he could not be Arcane or brought down by Honey, and that cuts his damage substantially. I want to say in half, though, that might be an exaggeration. Either way, by having the Rage active, they could not kill him whatsoever. Couldn't even put a dent in his HP, and instead they just keep him up. Now Fly in a terrible spot. Nakes Bomb does come on through. Does not have a Quelling Blade to go through, but either way, they're going to get the kill. Nice Nightmare, nice mech, but it's just delaying the inevitable, and Loda will clean it up here. So, Luminate goes across, S4 getting a slow off on Trixie, but uh, they don't have the initiation potential to actually follow it up. Sonic Wave, and the Wrath of Nature says otherwise, as they just completely obliterate him. Did not think they could get that kill, but proving me wrong once again. S4 coming on in, double damage rune should right click on an arrow, but I think they're a little too afraid of a rank 1 cooldown now. EGM, in over his head, drops the Sands of Glyphs, misses, completely whiffs it, and said EGM will be dropped down with the next right click, so... Yeah, uh, they all fell back and uh, kind of putting their ta tucking their tails between their legs. I think they could have gone for one more kill, but all falling back from here. Actually, hook shot, not letting that happen. Ake okay, gonna get picked off. Nice initiation, Trixie keeping them in the cards. Did Ruby did Ruby drop that Ascendancy Eclipse? Yes, yeah, that was his. Oh, when did he steal it? I didn't see him get his He's hands on that while, because. Actually, so. Okay. I was about to say, because uh, OD didn't drop his, so when did he get the steal off? Must have been, yeah, for quite some time. But now the tier 1 mid can get picked up. Some nice couple of counter kills there from now, but in the end, I think this is kind of indicative how they're losing map control here, and they really need to get some of these wards down to get a good vision of what the hell is going on from Alliance. In fact, do they even have any up at the moment's question? They're going for a bit of a smoke ink now. Let me just double check. No, the, all their wards are on cooldowns. There's some counter warding coming in. Well, actually, no, they're focusing on watching the bottom rune in the mid lane there. Mm -hmm. So the There's Raptor no of that fight, I don't think that they, sh uh, they... I think they were really, really threatened by that rank 1 call down. They may have thought that Jar Copter was level 11, but he was actually only level 10. So it could have actually been him just surviving on through. The one big weakness they have right now is no way to recover that HP once they tank it up. Uh, right now, I mean, Queen of Pain going for Orchid. 
uh, the Keeper Light just trying to survive with wards. It's kind of playing number five right now. EGM rushing out that bl Blink Dagger. It means I don't have a mechanism, especially because Bulldog loves his right-click profit. So, lacking a little bit of utility, that 250 HP heal could make or break a fight for them, but right now they don't have it available, and instead, they're just kind of fighting with a lot of damage up front and trying to do as much as they can in that short time span. And now we do see Roshan falling to Fnatic. Air going to be able to pick that up for the ages. Jumping on in. They get a big Sanity's on to two at least. Wrath of Nature going across though. No tell. Going to be able to get the Nightmare off on S4. Going to get hit by the call down here. But meanwhile, Loda just munching on top of Hani. Trying to go. EGM steals up the Fiend's Grip, but it gets interrupted prematurely. EGM barely getting it out. No. The Black Cannon going to finish the job here. Black Hole onto Loda. Onto Bulldog. Can they finish it right here? Fly almost gets out of there. But instead, it's going to be. A nice block from the Treants, forcing Hani to use the four staff. Might not even get the kill. Armlet toggle off. He can turn it on and off all day long. Meanwhile, Era chasing out Ake to finish the job here. He has his phase boots. The blinding light gonna be the only thing to force him back. Now we do see Trixie trying to pursue onto Loda, but again, he still has that armlet and he's still gonna keep on making sure that there's no way they can finish seal the deal. Either way, a great fight for Fnatic as a whole, but they haven't actually gotten any permanent results as a result of it. I honestly think uh, Alliance came out ahead there to be dead honest because Obsidian Destroyer um, got killed, had to buy, I'm pretty sure he got had to buy back to get back into that. Oh actually, Loda, sort of. he armleted off outside his friggin base, he was actually just at the oh. end of the fountain <laughs> and they got a pick off on the hard carry which is just immense. Wow. Wow, so Trixie paying dividends there, but yeah, no, Obsidian Destroyer, OD got killed and had to buy back and then still didn't get any kills out of the buyback, so I mean, that was a pretty big blow, and they lost uh, Enigma in there as well, so I feel like, I kind of feel like Alliance came, clearly came out ahead, and then not so much when they got the pick up on Loda at the very least. Yeah. Bullseye on his back, Loda just gets locked down right outside the fountain. <laughs> Little and friendly <laughs> banter, that's hilarious. Um, but, yeah. I don't know. Why, with that lifestealer, you were saying that Alliance came out ahead before. What do you think with that lifestealer being part of the casualties? Uh, I think the lifestealer is still where he needs to be. He's already picked up his armor. I mean, the thing is, that was a pretty good indication of why these fights are going to be difficult for Fnatic, uh, just because they thought they were ahead. Like, they thought they had a clear advantage, and then suddenly Nate's bomb out of nowhere. Yeah. comes in off Bulldog. And, it's just, uh, and, you know, and that's pretty much what jumped the OD. Just literally dropped on his head and blasted him before he could do anything about it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, until he gets a defensive item up, there's not a lot he can do about it. Just the open wounds is going to wreck him. He just can't get away from the nakes. The nakes has enough sheer damage to cut through him. He's only got nine armor as well as the other bit of an issue as well. And then, of course, the Nature's Prophet. I mean, Nature's Prophet wasn't even hitting him. Nature's Prophet was prisoned while he was doing that. But still, they're going to have to make sure somebody's there, like, basically backing up and defending him and preventing that from happening. I mean, the other option, of course, is Queen of Pain acts as a taxi service. So I think that's going to be their issue here. I almost want to see... I almost want to see the BKB on the OD, but then again, I mean, the other choice, of course, is the Hex, just to try and get it down. He can't kill him that quickly, so if he can ride out the Rage and just get the Hex down after that, that'll be enough, mm -hmm. but we'll see. Yeah, it's, it's a tough call. There's no easy item for Hani in this position. He's either going to have to farm hard and save for that Scythe. I mean, Ghost Scepter, not great because you're up against a Queen of Pain and a, a Rubik, and even then Breath of Nature has been doing a lot of substantial damage that'll go right on through that Ethereal. And, uh, yeah, it's just not really going to be the option of choice. So BKB seems like it would be the best option because it does mean that you can continue right-clicking, not having to worry about blinding light. But, yeah, like you said, he kind of wants a little bit more oomph, and he needs something like a scythe, something with a mystic staff involved to actually make that work for him. Oh, I just see the chat is caught up to the rocket. They're freaking out now. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> anyway, though, yeah. Bulldog now going for a Nake's Bomb, I think. Yep. Yeah, he's... Oh, there we go. He's... Teleports in and then goes with the. And this is where. Oh, this is the Shadow Blade. This is working really well. The fact they're not using oh, the no. Shadow Blade. Trixie should get away here. Should be able to. Nope! Never mind. He's dead. Wrath of Nature going to clean that one up. Just but I mean, this is where I like it on the Nature's Prop because he's not using it as a defense mine. It's for aggression. It's for killing people. It's for ganking. Mm -hmm. And that I like on the Bulldog. Yeah. The fact that he's using the Shadow Blade for the killing power and just basically the huge threat now. Like, even OD, like, he's seen that. He's like, holy shit. Now I. See what he's doing. Like, he's too scared to move out from the tower. He wants to stay here where people can TP and save him. He won't push up that lane, he won't farm, even with Ward Vision. That's exactly the kind of fear they want to strike into his heart. Yeah. So, yeah, that makes it really, really good for him. Uh, I don't know, like, looking at this specifically, yeah, that initiation is very, very scary, and there's not really much that can be done about it. I feel if, like, Trixie popped off his hookshot and got the 1.5 seconds done on both of them and then TP'd away, he might have been able to get out, but beyond that, the, you're seeing 100 to 0 potential, and now that we're going to see the Queen of Pain with her Orchid on top of that, if she's anywhere near aggressive position, and they have the next loaded on up, just 
shoot on out there, they're going to be able to go in for three-man ganks, very mobile, and get in and get out very, very quickly, which is the, the kind of down guerrilla warfare that S4 loves to play on his Queen of Pain. So in this position, as long as they have the vision advantage, they're going to be in a good spot. And Shadow Blade, of course, goes a long way for that. But uh, they're going to have to keep the wards active. For right now, one ward out in the mid lane, one down towards the bottom rune. And uh, beyond that, they're kind of blind. So Alliance have to be cautious. Obviously, the Queen of Pain venturing out a little bit too far over in the enemy jungle. And it was actually picked off most recently. So they, they do have the potential for the momentum swing. They just have to do it in a very concise fashion. I want to bring something up, though. Era, despite his uh, questionable start, has really, really caught up. In fact, he's up to 412. He's In fact, he's on top of the GPM right now, thanks to this ancient stack. So that's actually a really, really good sign for Fnatic here, the fact that he's getting up and running. And OD, uh, he's dropped down a little bit, 372, but still doing quite good. And of course, he's got his early item. He's well on his way to his face. Once he gets his hex, I mean, OD is going to become quite fearsome. And Queen of Pain definitely, I agree, she needs that. She really, really needs to get that BKB next, so she's going to get hexed and then blasted by the Arcane Orbs. That said... If they can get these Nakes bombs down, once Nakes gets the Abyssal Blade, I think he can possibly tear OD to shreds before he can do much about it. Yeah. So it's going to be down to, it's pretty much going to be on the Clockwork to save him. Mm -hmm. All the Black Holes, or that, that, that's still the Black Mid, Holes. They're going to come out on S4, Trixie going to go in for the hook shot right here, as well as that Rocket Flare, to get a nice little easy pick off. And yeah, there's Queen of Pain stepping out of her bounds just a little bit. Uh, really, Bane is the one that can punish that so extensively, yeah, because he can keep you in that position for a very extensive period of time. Um, no, I, I definitely think the next bombs would be a pretty big deal. As far as the Abyssal goes, it seems like that's a little ambitious for right now. I mean, he does have the Basher, so he is only going to be three, not even 3,000 gold away from it, but they need the next two fights to work out well for them, if they could even think about that, because, uh, actually, we're going to see a fight come out right now and kind of see how decisive these picks can be. We do have Fiend Script still available, stolen by Rubik. He's actually going to have that for quite some time. Bulldog going to get out of here, just barely. Very, very fortunate for him. Meanwhile, pressure comes out from Ake, smoked up, spamming on his Illuminate without revealing himself. That's pretty awesome, actually. So he's just going to TP away in just a moment, but uh, waiting for somebody to actually force him out of this position here. He's keeping pressure. So at the moment, I don't think Hanny's actually too bothered about him pressing that lane just because this means Hanny can farm behind his tier 3 with safety. So I think this actually works out for Hanny just fine as well. And we could, the Arcane Orb, like, last thing behind the house, he gets every single shot there. Yeah. There's no real issue for him farming behind a tower. Although that said, he's going to push up now. Now he could be in trouble because Queen of Pain, here we go. Here comes the Orchid. Blink, Orchid, you are dead, Hanny. Yeah. There we go. Blink, Orchid, Scream, Sonic Wave, four star for Wave. No, he's no, dead. The, he's the dead. Burn hit. Yeah. Yeah. The burn should get him. Tries to go for a Nightmare save. They're not going to happen, though, as it looks like they are going to try and counterattack here and find absolutely nobody. They poured in. They're going for the save, but it's just not going to happen. Yeah. They they were close. I mean, they were only a second away from being able to actually set them up, at least to prevent the damage coming in. For those that don't know, Orchid applies its damage, its amplification of damage after the effect expires, based on the difference of health from what they started with and what they ended with. And uh, so that pretty much was what killed them after the fact. But, yeah, no, they found that great pickoff. They commit the ultimate, but well worth it with that Orchid, and now they kind of get a little bit more control. They're Roshan respawning in two minutes. That's going to be big, because right now it go, it's in Fnatic's territory because they have the Sanities, because they have the Black Hole, but a couple more cool plays like that, and Alliance could actually take this Roshan, and that would be a huge coup for them. Yeah, I think grab that. That said, Enigma is well on his way to the BKB. Once he has that, I think it's time to get a blink to get some kind of mobility because they really will need that potential to Alpha Strike. Or not so much Alpha Strike, but if Queen of Pain tries that shenanigans or if Prophet tries shenanigans with delivering a Nakes on top of their OD, basically you can have the immediate counterattack of I jump in, black hole the crap out of you and buy time for him to counterattack with Sandy's Eclipse and the rest of those goodies as well. So I think that's uh, something they really want to get up and running as well. But of course, he will need the Black King Bar to make sure he doesn't get interrupted while he's doing that. And that's obviously a big downside for Alliance. They don't have anything that can interrupt through that beyond possibly an Abyssal Blade if if Loda can get his hands on that. But I mean, he's over halfway, or he's roughly halfway right now to picking that up. So I mean, he's getting pretty close. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a, definitely a position that they can just start being really, really aggressive once they pick up that core item. And they're actually going to go now. They're going to start and smoke. Hani is moving in towards his scythe, but if they go now, they can actually avoid Prophet scythe as well. He's actually about 800 away, and if they can just manage to go in aggressive and find a pickoff now, that's going to set them up for the Roshan, which again is respawning in not even a minute. So in a good position there. And uh, yeah, they started off down here in the bottom, looking for somebody farming the jungle. They know that nobody's been here recently. They figure somebody's going to be coming forth in a moment. The illusions are not going to dispel this. Oh my gosh, Hani, that was a misplay. That was a knee-jerk gut reaction, but they didn't lose their smoke. They had to know those were illusions. And instead, Hani just right-clicks them down, screwing everything up a little bit. But, you know, it won't be the end of the world. They might have missed out on a potential kill, I don't know, on a loader or something. But 
they still have control over this Roshan, and they should be able to take it away. I mean, we might even see a possible bait and switch here. They're going to get forced to TP back to defend their base rack, or to tier three, and then we'll have Alliance. I mean, just sort of. I mean, right now they could keep pressure on that, pretend they're there, and then just have Loader. I'm oh, sorry, Bulldog deliver Loader to the Roshan pit. And Loader right now, he could solo that pretty easily, I reckon. Yeah, definitely has the potential with the Basher, and yeah, just generally if he has anybody help him out a little bit here and there. So, curious to see what is going to happen in the next few seconds here. Lining it up, the BKB is still a long way out for S4. The Scythe of Ice should be here in the Profit. Yes, he has the cash value for it, and it should be picking up right now, as a matter of fact. And so, Scythe in this next team fight, he won't have buyback. But he does have the hex stick, and that could be the, the game changer here. As far as Black King bars, right now only Era has one, only Era, and so everybody else is just as apt to be turned into a piglet. Scouting out right now, both teams are going to have vision. Uh, Trent and the Rocket Flare going to have a good perspective on this, but neither one wants to go in. Thinking about it, yeah, they're just checking it out, just going to make sure nothing is nothing is going on in there. And I think this is alright. Oh, they should be going to smoke up and they're going to look for a potential gank. That said, Alliance already falling back, so they're not going to be any serious danger here. Although, that said, Druid, uh, Nature's Prophet actually might get spotted up. No, Bulldog going in the opposite direction won't get spotted up by that Dire Ward there. The Dire, though, Fnatic, hell bent on getting this pick off. I mean, if they get this pick off, maybe they'll be able to get that uh, Roshan kill, especially if they can kill Bulldog as well. He's got no money for. He's got no money for buyback there. And no, they've changed their mind again. The Tree Puppet's still being used to spot that up. And it looks like they won't be able to gun for that. I mean, unless they want to give themselves away. There we go. Hanny's going to kill. I mean, this might be the bait that they need to force Fnatic, uh, to force Alliance to come down and engage them. Actually, no, they're not just trying to force engage. They're actually going to try and take this if they possibly can. Yep. So going on in, they're going to try to bring it down very, very quickly. But there is going to be some scouting out in just a moment. They're going to try to go for maybe Sprouts for Vision. Uh, no, they're going to just go ahead and drop down, illuminate in the pit S4 with the next bomb coming in. But then Roche isn't down far enough. They get the Fiend's Grip on top to lock down S4. He can't do anything. Loda is going to get stunned up himself by the Roche, actually. And now taking so much damage here. Rage has expired on the run. He will be able to get on out of there. But no, there is going to be huge damage coming forth. Arma Toggle keeps him active just a little bit more. Manning up hard on to fly. Will he go for the black hole? No. Gets Orchid, but gets Nightmare. Survives through the Illuminate. They might be able to finish this off. No, that is going to be the bot back Queen of Pain popping off that ultimate, cleaning it up here. Just obliterating everybody. Buyback from Jarcrafter. Buyback from the Enigma. Roche only at 3200 HP. Can they get back in here? They have the uh, black hole, but they don't have the blink. I think he should be able to get there in time. Roshan's not taking that much damage. It comes down to whether or not the other guys. I think they're actually going to let him have it. This side is not worth trying to fight. Maybe not. They're sort of pansied about. They're sort of pansied about it. They're not going to get there in time, though. They will be able to bring this down. They waited a little bit too long. Had they gone straight away, they could have stopped this. But as is, they will get the Aegis and a buyback from Queen of Pain. That was definitely crucial to that fight. Had she not turned back, there would have been a convincing win for Fnatic and a, definitely an easy rush for them to finish off. But as it is, Alliance going to come out ahead there and definitely with some much needed gold. And now it is, in fact, the Nature's Prophet ahead on the gold per minute table. He's up to 463. We've had Fera drop down a little bit, but at the same time, he's still looking fairly strong. Looks like he's actually going for a butterfly next. And that's definitely going to help him out a lot against the Nakes. Just looking at the Obsidian items as well. Still working towards that Hex. Almost has the Mystic Staff. So, yeah, I mean, that's going to help out his damage components substantially. I mean, Sandy's Eclipse, of course, scaling based on that Arcane Orb the same. So he will be able to right-click really, really hard. But as far as the lockdown, are you really getting that much out of it? The big thing would be, like, hexing a Rubik that got a good spell steal off. But actually, we're going to see a Rubik picked off here. He doesn't have a Force, has his Ghost, but just going to go for Oh, not actually, a really cool move from EGM. Will he get out because of it? Blink him? No. Just a moment too late for the Brighter Solid connects on top of But, man, that was actually really neat. Uh, the telekinesis, he threw them out of the cogs. If it was a rank 3 telly, I think he would have gotten the blink off. Whether or not that would have saved him is a completely different story, but a nice little maneuver nevertheless. Yeah, as it looks like the push is on the top lane, though. Alliance going to keep that up there. Probably force an egg to TP back there. I'm getting messages at 5 in the morning, never mind. But at the moment, I'm just looking at this lineup here. I mean, sure, you get the hex off. The bigger issue right now is I think they really, really need mobility on Enigma, almost possible when they need to finish the BKB. They really need to be able to jump in there and get these strikes in, because right now, the mobility from Queen of Pain and the mobility, yeah, the mobility that she's lending to Nakes is really, really stuffing them over. They need to get them in there. That or the Clockwork really needs to start landing his hits. I mean, at that Roche fight, Clockwork was doing God knows what up here by himself in the tree. He didn't really get the hit in he needed. He needed to just hook in and then catch Queen of Pain and Nakes to stop them from jumping all over, because they forced OD out of the fight very quickly and very early on and did a ton of damage. 
So now in this position here, really not sure who's going to take this away. It looks like a Heaven's Halberd is going to be Lotus Choice. Gives them evasion versus the focused right clicks of Gyrocopter, another black cannon, but the right clicks nevertheless. And uh, will allow him to disarm the Gyro so that he won't be able to make as much impact. Um, do you think it could be good against the Outworld Devourer as well, just based on how right click oriented he is after he drops the hammer? Uh, you mean Heaven's Halberd? Yeah. yeah, I mean, Heaven's Halberd, pretty much always always a safe bet to picking that up. I mean, it's also just EHP as well, just basically, if you can dodge even one orb hit, it's going to be a huge deal yeah. for him. So I think it's definitely a solid pick, and also it's it's fantastic against the range here as well. I mean, if he gets both the Heaven's Halberd and then the, if he gets both the Heaven's Halberd and then the Abyssal Blade after it, he's got so much, so much potential to completely screw down OD. Even if OD, like, if he uses up a lot of his, B, I assume he's going to get a BKB after mm. this um, Hex. If he's down to that four second thing, I mean, he can practically pretty much guarantee to stun him all the way through the BKB, and as soon as the BKB is wears off, you hit him with the Heaven's Halberd. Nice. That's really, really going to piss him off. Yeah. And on top of that, you're looking at Blinding Light from the Keeper of Light. You have a couple of Ghost Scepters. It's really hard for OD actually lock people down. Since he doesn't have the Black King Bar, he doesn't have any way of getting through Blinding. So right now, uh, Keeper of Light has rank 2. That puts the Blinding Light at a 4 second duration, 80% miss chance. And on top of that, the Evasion. It's really going to be hard for OD to really stay on target. Now, we're actually going to see Loda initiate on the fly here. No way for him to get out of there. And there's the Telekinesis without the blink. Means they got a full pickoff on Enigma. And he doesn't have buyback available for another couple minutes. They will use this as an opportunity to force the high ground. Take the tier 3 up top. And there's not so much that Fnatic can do. I mean, if they get great cogs called down and popping off that Sanity's Eclipse on just about everybody, they might be able to make it work. But without this black hole, it's going to be very dicey indeed. You see Trixie just trying to hold him off there, but the Cogs gets tossed in back in, though. Will Force staff himself away, and will walk away quite safely. Flat Cannon also being tossed in there. What is, uh, they picked up there on the Gyrocop? Still nothing new. The Hex is up, though, mm -hmm. on OD. If anything's going to help save him, it's going to be this Hex, the shutdown from that, because we still don't have the Beak. Oh, no, I lied. We have the Beak of in the Queen of Pain. Never mind. That's going to pretty much prevent that from being a huge deal, although they can, of course, Hex and Exit Prophet and burst him down before he can get his own Hex off, so... We'll see whether or not that works out for them. That's it. Error going to continue to defend here. I think they should be okay for the moment. And Bulldog just going to throw the spread up in the high ground there. But the Jib Leap in the Hex gets thrown down there on top of Trixie. Trixie going to die there for sure once that damage kicks in. Cooldown getting tossed in there as well. EGM managing to get free though. Won't be even right click down. Also the Ghost Step but not getting screwed over there inside the cooldown. Managing to walk away from that one. That said, they've got two down. None in return for Alliance. Alliance looking in a very strong position. Should be able to take this tower. I don't think they've got the firepower to finish. And Loda actually going for an SMI. I mean, I like this. I mean, obviously it's no Heaven Tower, but in terms to lockdown, but at the same time, I don't think it's a bad item on the lifestyle. Like, Nakes needs everything that SMY gives him. Gives him the slow to help him keep on target, gives him movement speed, needs attack speed, needs the strength, needs the damage. Needs absolutely everything out of that, and the attack speed, obviously, as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would prefer the Halberd by myself, based on what they're up against, but obviously, he can go for whatever he darn well feels like, and so far, so good. That initiation in that last fight, S4 jumping in with the Nakes bomb. Cleaning house using that max out ultimate so very effective. That's what I'm talking about He didn't even BKB that he was so confident in his position just or hit one guy get both abilities off and my goodness They just drop like rocks now coming in pushing up on the tier 3 They've already breached high ground up top pressuring uh, era really really hardcore BKBs on cooldown This is could be clutch if they could bring him down But still sitting at 1 3rd HP EGM's the one to be hogged backwards as that hookshot from Trixie comes on through but mecking up they're going to try to hold this line. Drop, needs to drop a Midnight Pulse to keep this active. But for right now, they're just letting Era heal on up. And it looks like Alliance is going to fall back from here. Mm, then we'll have to back up. Oh, we see the port in though. Continual push. There's pressure right now on Alliance. Definitely hard stuff for them to deal with there. Is it going to be chased back? <coughs> Excuse me. They've been pretty much being pinned in their base by the continual Illuminate spam. Coming out of uh, coming out of um, keep it light, just forcing them to stay back there, defend these towers nonstop. Should also mention this blink rubric. I think this is really going to make things difficult for anybody to get off that good black hole if he gets his own blink, just because it's going to be so easy for Rubik to steal his own now. Mm -hmm. Damn. You can see this top tower needs a uh, bottom tower needs denying as well. They will pick that up as well. But this is really coming under ability to farm. That said, I mean it's getting to the stage in the game. It's getting towards the stage of the game. If they can just win a couple of good fights, it's going to be what they need to uh, just basically push down the mid and basically pick up a whole bunch of towers, possibly even get their own counteracts. I mean, they're not out of it yet, but it is definitely looking pretty bleak. Just a team fight power right now. The Queen of Pain are jumping in, initiating with the Hex. Is, uh, not the Hex, the, with the silence from the Orchid. It's been such a problem for them to deal with. Yeah, it's just, I mean, uh, quite, it's quite a nuisance in the first place, and they don't really have the tools available to really deal with it directly. And it's just going to get harder and harder to deal with. I would say that they would, they won't win 
against the carries on Alliance when you add up how much Farm Profit's going to get and uh, Lifesaver when you were considering like the Heaven's Halberd Abyssal. But building up Sanjan Yasha definitely changes uh, the mindset of Loda as far as how what timing he's looking for to be at his optimum. Actually, Sanjan Yasha, around 40 plus minutes, it's actually hitting its peak as far as what it can actually provide to the hero as far as that item slot allocation because it is only 4400 gold i believe applied to one single item slot and there's a lot more expensive items that can apply a lot more we are going to see loda get sheeped up big damage coming on through from the orb from the ultimate but loda still stands and now they're going to go for the turnaround here fly looking for the black hole gets it onto two both s4 and loda here but it's stolen by the rubik coming on in egm dropping the triple black hole coming down bringing down honey bringing down air but the follow-up damage isn't there s4 taking too many hits with fiend script that entire duration era still dropping though the illuminate queen it. Honey just barely getting on out of there. Blinding lighted actually to safety, but there is EGM jumping man mode. And although he trades his life, he sets it up so that at least S4 can clean up Honey. And that's a buyback they do not have. So going on in, they're going to be able to take this tier 3. I believe this racks. There it is. Good game, well played. On the back of that amazing ultimate of EGM. Stealing the black hole, making it work for them. Alliance, take this game too, and we're going to a number 3. I would say a lot of this game for Alliance, one on the back of their early rotation to support. Like smart, really smart for moving their supports as well as the Queen of Pain and Ren really early on. And the biggest deal, of course, putting a lot of pressure on uh, putting a lot of pressure on the Jarrah but forcing the rotations and also picking off, picking off Enigma as well, forcing him out of the jungle and just buying room for like Queen of Pain. Had she not gotten the early farm, she did the early levels. She did. This would have been an entirely different match for uh, this uh, for Alliance. S4 was crucial to this victory, and it those rotations from the sport pulling the Fnatic supports away and buying room for the S4 was what I think, in all honesty, won them this match. As well as, of course, the team fights. I mean, they did really have some impeccable team fights as well with the Nades bombs. But all in all, it really rode on the back of the Queen of Pain as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just so much aggression. I love the S4 initiation to break the base up top. I mean, that was the one thing that made sure that Alliance were cementing their advantage. And then that final fight was all that they could handle as far as the remainder of their potential to win this game. So, unfortunately, the Gyrocopter just didn't get to a point where he was relevant. I see Twitch chat screaming for Divine Rapiers, but he doesn't even have a lifesteal. He doesn't even have a Morbid Mask. He went for Yasha, now going for Butterfly, or at least the Talisman of Evasion. So, the BKB is a nice start, but in general, you need to lay the groundwork there, and Gyrocopter just never really got to that point. Only 398 GPM compared to Bulldog's 550, Lotus 508, and even S4's 455. Era was not as big of a player as he needed to be as far as that early CS and that obviously transitioning into mid to late game and that's just based on the momentum. Uh, Alliance kept on pushing in, putting pressure out, getting kills, getting ganks and from there Era just kind of fell behind. O OD even kind of outclassing him, not in farm necessarily but as far as teamfight impact it seemed like OD was able to at least get more pot shots off because he wasn't the main focus. Either way the end result is that Alliance carried up and EGM smacks him down with a beautiful Stolen Black Hole, and uh, from there, we're going to be looking at Game 3. Do you have any thoughts, any uh, opinion as far as who's going to take this last one? Oh, good guy. I mean, you could swing either way. To be honest, I mean, we've got to point out that Fnatic, they had a pretty good early game. It was going all right. It's just as the game ticked on, Alliance just got the upper hand little by little, and it was those early towers as well, buying the room, like just making it harder and harder for Fnatic to farm, and just gradually creeping in. I think it was really also a big deal as well. So, I mean... Third game, either way. No real way to call it just yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hard to say. We'll see exactly what comes on through. I think Fly might be a little bit more hesitant about picking up that Enigma this time around, but we'll see. Anyways, Draft will come on through as soon as we get this game going, which will be approximately four minutes. Thanks for tuning on in, guys, to the Premier League Season 5 Aghanim's Cup. Uh, we will be g jumping on into this next game as soon as possible to bring you guys some more amazing Dota between two amazing teams. Again, this is the grand final for this Cup number 3. Winner getting 100 points to move in uh, more rapidly to secure themselves a position for the playoffs. So, awesome day of Dota, concluding with this final match.